Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is an early session update for uh, Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. Uh, we'll start out uh, with a very brief update on the broad markets and then roll into trade ideas. Uh, you know, I've, I've told you in recent uh, days, even the last couple of weeks here, uh, it's been getting harder and harder to find uh, attractive looking trade setups, you know, actionable trade ideas or, you know, pending trade ideas uh, with attractive risk reward ratios, either clearly bullish or clearly bearish charts. However, that's not to say there haven't been any. And so what I'm going to do is just loop back and do updates on uh, uh, a lot of the trade ideas that I've uh, put out here in the last couple months. Um, so some of those are, are working out. Some have just recently broken out and uh, and I'll do updates there. It'll kind of be a uh, let's say about hmm, probably looking a little over a dozen uh, trade ideas here I'll update and they're going to be in different sectors different industries long and short all right just to start out and get the markets out of the way here's QQQ there's a the recent trading range that we've been in uh, right here for the last uh, couple weeks there um, between this area this little boxed area right here uh, we recently broke out and as mentioned um, put in a divergent high uh, we still have uh, negative divergence one I call potential divergence that's what I wanted to talk on and I, I did say that you know we we're at the top of the range yesterday I could see the you know easily see a marginal new high uh, and if it was only marginal meaning a slight new high and a reversal uh, then that uh, still keeps these divergences very much intact and still sets the stage that we may fall back into the zone and down below um, now what we need to see to increase the odds of this happening or actually increase the odds of this happening that we uh, break the breakout sticks because this is a trading range and I often say that uh, break above or below usually determines the next direction although right here we had a whipsaw uh, will this prove to be a whipsaw the real deal again it's these divergences that uh, lead me to uh, believe that uh, the breakout will not last if we didn't have the divergences I'd be much more confident in a, in a, in a run up here a tradable run um, but uh, one thing let's just talk about the PPO real quick and then we'll move on uh, the PPO is the cousin to the MACD a lot of charting platforms will use MACD uh, I like the PPO close cousin but I think it does a little bit better job overall than the MACD for, uh, uh, for a lot of the charting the charting style that I use um, and what what I've always talked about on divergences is there are what I call uh, confirmed divergence and potential divergence. Currently, and for the last uh, several days, we've had potential negative divergence. Uh, in my book, and again, this is just me, uh, I've never seen this in a textbook, but it's always how I've uh, traded. Uh, I consider divergence confirmed once you effectively have for negative divergence you need a lower peak so we had uh, at this point right there we had a different peak in the uh, in the uh, PPO and what I'm referring to here is a bullish or bearish crossover I'm gonna hopefully you can see these lines let me just make sure that one is nice and bright uh, there we can see it now now you can and okay what I'm referring to is the indicator must make a lower peak okay there's a peak and I'm talking about this PPO line right there so it was going up it turned down and at this point you made a bearish crossover and that effectively put in a lower high now we had a lower high there and there was negative divergence at that point and then the, the divergence extended this time around here was a peak okay so there was a peak in the in the uh, PPO right there it turned down made a bearish crossover shortly afterwards and it has not crossed since it's made a bullish crossover so there's our trough peak trough and now to confirm the divergence we need to curl down we need to have the PPO line turn down and cross down below the signal line the white line to me that will be confirmed negative divergence and then the odds go up considerably uh, for a uh, correction or trend reversal same thing with positive divergence we had bullish divergence right here there was a reaction low in the um, PPO prices had uh, made a low there but then we made a higher low and it wasn't until this point that was when the divergence was confirmed right there because we put in that lower low see here it didn't cross over until here we had there was our peak on the top and then another trough a lower low and that was a confirmed divergence and then of course you can well no maybe you couldn't you can see it right there so that confirmed the divergent low this is still a, what I call an unconfirmed divergent high pending that crossover and so that's what I'll be watching for and 
spent quite a bit of time on that, but um, I always use those termin that terminology and I wanted to share it there. Now let's look at the uh, broad market. Of course, you want to see the same thing there. This is the S&P 500 uh, via SPY. And here's your indicator. And we're just about to get, if we can go down a little bit more, we've been stalling out, as I mentioned, right here uh, recently. Uh, there's the uh, price up top. Uh, we've been stalling out around this level. We had a divergent high here and we have extended the divergence. Actually, at this point, it wasn't even confirmed because the indicator, the PPO, was still heading down. And that's the thing about it. So you have, again, negative divergence, but it's unconfirmed. It'll be confirmed if we get a bearish, a clean bearish crossover, and that will effectively give us a lower high or a peak, a lower high in the indicator with higher highs in prices. And uh, again, the odds will then go up substantially uh, for a correction at that point. Now let's move on to trade ideas, and there's a lot of them. I'm going to cover them in no particular order. I have two watch lists that I've been you know, monitoring for the uh, last few months now, adding some ideas. These are all, or most of these, have been shared in, uh, on the site here in the past. And again, I'm not going in any particular order. It's just how they're sorted right now. Uh, BlackBerry covered quite a bit recently in one of the meme stocks. Uh, objective long entry there at $8. I've already covered that and uh, going up because, again, uh, fundamentals don't match what's going on here. This is uh, a lot of the Reddit uh, Wall Street bet group pumping this one up along with AMC and GameStop. Uh, SPCE, I believe I mentioned this one back here. I can't recall. I had it here at support. I've had this line here for a while, 1464. That line was created back in May. So it would have been right about that time we hit there. But then this trend line here I've had for a while here. This was created back in April, April 27th. And we popped above it and it's started to gain some traction since. And SP, SPC is Virgin Galactic Holdings. Um, but I wanted to point it out because we're at uh, right above. Now, intraday, we're taking it out. 3592, we'll call that 36 resistance. And I would put good odds here that this is a momentum fueled overshoot. And that'd be the end of the run. It's been a pretty, pretty strong rally since it popped above the trend line there. Uh, it's rallied about 100%. But again, pretty good resistance. Why is that resistance? Major reaction highs back here, reaction high there, reaction high right there. And there we are now. Um, we did get close and had a pullback, but this is the first full tag of it. So again, I suspect uh, most likely by the end of the day or tomorrow, we'll come back and settle around that 36 level, probably maybe even correct. I have a pullback there because this one uh, is certainly getting ahead of itself right now. Uh, next up in my list was plug. Plug was highlighted back here, here, here. We had a little whipsaw signal, but what it did is it continued. Actually, take that back. The, the divergence uh, is right here uh, at this point. There's our positive divergence. And then there was a breakout right there. And it's been steadily moving higher. This is plug power. Um, and that's about a 45% run since that breakout. And I think the big level when it regained 25, 28. And uh, next resistance uh, is up here and potential target about 37.50, about call it 37.50. And then 48.59 if it can continue to run. RKDA was mentioned as a, an objective long entry here, uh, down around this uh, 238 support level, as it was back here many times, and most recently here again. And it's 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 been climbing steadily. Uh, we're up about 23%. And again, the uh, first target, and right now, just the only one I'm really eyeing is about that 345-ish level there. So that one's working out. Uh, DM was mentioned here. It was first on a breakout, and then we had a back test of this very steep downtrend line and on that back test as mentioned recently we put in a divergent low and it's been steadily advancing and also had support here around 1079 when i first highlighted this if i recall i believe it was this one said we had support there you could take a shot and even better support here at 10 1080 ish if it got there and so far it did and uh from that 1080 level we're up about 42 percent but we are now at that uh, or we just came Close enough that that was effectively a tag of that 1566 target yesterday. I wanted to mention that. Um, there's still upside momentum here. And uh, uh, however, you have a confluence of moving averages, so it's pretty significant resistance. 
So, you know, not a bad time if you didn't already to take some profits or at least raise stops. Any pullback should ideally, again, quote, should, not necessarily will be, but should be contained by that 250 or 1250 ish uh, support level, anything below there. So, if you got in here, that could be a pretty, you know, uh, an objective stop now. Or again, um, well, you know, if you were riding it up and it hit that target, you probably shouldn't have given back on this much. If it can power through here, however, uh, that 1566 level, that is uh, and remains the next target up there, about tw uh, 2141. Uh, it certainly has some momentum there. Uh, what else do we have here? VLDR. I mentioned this one recently, the positive divergence right here, divergent low, and uh, said if it can pop above there, because it was mentioned back here first, then it fell below the 1099 level, call that 11. Uh, and I said, if, uh, in this highlight recently, put in a divergent low, and I said and we had rallied back up. So if we can take out 11, and you can see, and this is a great example, you can watch, you can see these little intraday pops, these skinny parts, the uh, called the candlestick shadow, uh, or and or wick shadow is uh, on either side that skinny part when it's on top it's a wick when it's on the bottom it's called a tail the fat parts the body so that just shows intraday it made a few um you know half-ass attempts to get above 11 could not do it but then boom this is an impulsive up so there's your breakout today uh that happened this morning and it hasn't looked back this is vldr you can see there's technical analysis once it powered up, took out 11 and just hasn't looked back and hit the uh, first target. So uh, I had a first target at 1228. High of the day was 1228, close enough for government work. Uh, and I just extended the trend line that I had on it before. So certainly, you know, um, you know, not a bad idea to take a quick, you know, 11% run uh, in a day and get out. Uh, but if you want to hold out for more, that would be the next uh, potential target, the downtrend line resistance. And then if, if it can break that, uh, you know, I still have these other potential targets way up here, 1729, 2068. Um, at this point in time, it should not fall back below the 11-ish uh, area. So you want to stop a little bit below that or better, you know, trail, t get a momentum trade, get in it. I like to use tight stops and then let it run from there if you're going to hold out for additional gains. Or again, take the quick profits, recycle back in if you want on a pullback, if you get it. Um, but I just wanted to do an update there. Uh, what else have we had here? This one's not going anywhere yet. G-S-H-H-Y, still, you know, a few failed attempts, you know, and again, nothing impulsive. I pointed out the day we broke above the 1055 level that it was not confirmed with volume. You want to see a high volume breakout. And so we still need to see it pretty much clear this level. We've got a little uptrend line here that it's uh, walking its way up right now, roughly, you know, I can't draw a perfect trend line, but uh, something like this, but actually that would be your, that would be your primary uptrend line right there. So we're quite a ways above it. Uh, again, low price, relatively low price, thinly traded more so. It's $10.55, $10 stock. Um, mm, let's see. On the long trades, we're still on the long trade idea list. Well, that's all that stands out. I have more in that list, but those are the ones I wanted to update. Now we're going to roll into the shorts. Now, this one's actually still in my long trade idea list because it was a long trade idea. Uh, it was a long and a break above 2240. Uh, uh, I believe it was, or was it even down here, and ran up quite a bit. So there was, uh, you know, certainly money to be made on the long side, uh, and then it turned around, and then I became, you know, bearish on the cryptos, uh, mainly when Bitcoin topped, put a sell signal on Bitcoin, I'll get to that in a second. And now we pulled back, and we've hit, uh, as you know, this one's been in a downtrend since, took out the primary uptrend line, that's what I mentioned uh, as being quite bearish right there, and said we'd probably see more downside, we broke down rallied back perfect almost perfectly to that forty eight dollar former upside target and uh, then now resistance and rejected there and now we hit this support so uh wouldn't be surprised to see a bounce here because we're at support however i have more downside in bitcoin so i think uh, etcg and again i think the cryptos you know are in a downtrend with more to come is what i've been saying for the last few weeks and so whether we bounce here or not i think etcg is coming back to at least 2240 maybe even that uptrend line right there um and again if we can take out 31 with conviction that should open the move to 2240 let me jump over to bitcoin now so we keep it uh, on task here or on topic um gbtc um this one 
uh, just a beautiful call here with a sell signal right there a day after the the, the all-time high or the multi-year high I believe it was all-time in Bitcoin and um, GBTC is the Bitcoin trust hit my first target zone hit the top of the zone then the bottom of the zone hit the zone again bottom of the zone and uh, you know bottom of the zone is that's the last support this is the first support you know a, a target zone is when I have two support levels in relative close proximity so instead of a single level that's and that's you can see how it acted it, it bounced off both the top and the bottom but once the bottom was taken out and it was highlighted at the time so there's a we open it up that'll open the door for a move down to T2 you got a golden opportunity the next day if you missed it on a back test of the uh, bottom of the zone about 39 and a quarter and then from there that was good for a swing down to my second target zone that was about a 29 percent drop hit it uh almost perfectly the low there was 28 dollars you can see right about there and then as usual the initial tag of a, a target that's why I list multiple targets uh, will often produce a reaction a reaction it can be defined as either a bounce you know when you're coming down or a consolidation or both and this was actually both bounce consolidated above the uh, second target zone uh, when that was hit or just when we we're coming up to it I added a third target down here to 2413 told you I suspected it will be hit um, but the next sell signal would come on a break below T2 which is 28 you know roughly and that happened today so there it is that's why I'm doing this update that opens the door uh, to the move for the move down to the next target t3 at about 24 or 15 or so and you know if things get ugly we can continue down um, I think it just changed time frames here yep it did uh, you know part of this you can say all oh, was the, the fundamentals uh, you know the catalyst for the breakdown what what you might attribute it to what I'm sure the headlines will is uh, the US government FBI is claiming that they recovered uh, the bitcoins from that uh, refinery hack um, or uh, oil distribution center hack and um, you know they got back they paid out five five million and they only recovered about uh, uh, a little less than half of that because bitcoins dropped in value by half that much so I guess they're saying they get all the bitcoins back and um, you know that that obviously uh, is you you would assume is not bullish for Bitcoin the whole lure of Bitcoin is the uh, you know anonymity uh, the security safety and now you know whether it's true or not honestly I, I don't know if it's it's true and you know it'd be a pretty pretty bold claim for the uh, FBI to make but um, it, it certainly takes shakes the confidence in Bitcoin uh, now that uh, you can see that that uh, it is traceable and you can uh, actually undo transactions like that or grab back bitcoins again that's what the claim is um, and it's all out there in the, in the media today so uh, either way um, but again I always say this it doesn't matter the fundamentals and the technicals most often align so the charts were already saying it was headed here and whether that was a catalyst or not or if it was just selling pressure boom doesn't matter that uh, level has been broken and again that opens the door for that move down there and if hit that's going to be a from the sell signal uh, I'm trying to you know let me just go right parallel to that sell signal I'm trying to grab right where it broke down from the trend line that'll be good for about a 55 percent drop in Bitcoin and again um, hmm, yeah I, I'd put decent odds that uh, we might continue down here to 17 I don't see a lot in the chart we're oversold there'll certainly be bounces along the way but uh, you might want to allow for a run or trade just trail your stops down uh, if you want to shoot for that $17 level because uh, I think that's that's uh, certainly possible all right now on to the list over the uh, short trades again that's just happens to be or the ethereum was in my long trade ideas because that was first so long I need to move it over to the other list but Bitcoin's been in my short trade list since there uh, AMC again I'm not going in a particular order I'm just in that list now AMC just again just going sideways here this is a you know a, a, a battle between the bulls and the bears and what I'm looking at here is you have this triangle ish pattern here we can draw it another way let's just draw it like this and show you there's the uh, top of the triangle there's the bottom of the triangle and so whichever way this breaks could uh, decide the fate uh, I still think it's gonna break to the downside I don't think the 
you know, I know the Reddit crowd is just as emphatic as ever. Um, I even talked to a friend of mine today who's in that group and believes it's going to the moon. And, you know, we had a, a very, you know, fruitful conversation uh, as to, you know, why, why he thinks the case is made that it's going to have a ginormous short squeeze and blow, blow past 100. And, you know, Mike and I laid out my case. Um, several things, but uh, not limited to the fact that it's that whole fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me thing. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure that the hedges, the hedge funds that are in there now, and I know hedge funds, they're not all equal. Each one's run by different uh, people or a different person. And, you know, and a couple got, got clocked hard on GameStop and, and, and blew up. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to, to have that happen again, uh, if I ran a hedge fund um, and I got squeezed out to the tune where it did significant damage to the fund because I was short a stock that um, the same group of people were able to squeeze again, the, the GameStop crowd, the Reddit crowd, I mean, um, yeah, that's not going to look so good. And you might even face some shareholder lawsuits there. I don't know if that's, you know, uh, depending on how the, um, you know, the fund would be, uh, you know, what kind of uh, d disclaimers and um, you know, legal disclaimers they have, but uh, I, I, th my point is, uh, I, I doubt that's going to happen again. And uh, you know, well, one of many ways, you know, let's just say I was a hedge fund, and I want, and I knew this stock was was valued at zero or near zero, like like many analysts say. Um, but yet, I was also aware that uh, you know, given the right conditions, it is certainly right for a short squeeze, high short interest, that kind of thing. Uh, so what I do, let's say I shorted it at forty. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to limit my downside, unlike the funds that blew up last time, uh, I could just buy, let's say I wanted to limit my upside to 70, my loss potential from 40 to 70. So, you know, I, I, I calculated, uh, you know, shorting, you know, whatever number of shares, 10,000 shares at $40, uh, willing to, you know, take a loss of, uh, if the stock goes up to 70, but if you get stopped out, see, there's a difference of being, uh, wrong and early on a trade. I've always said that. Um, sometimes I'm early on a trade and sometimes I'm wrong. If I'm early on a trade, uh, let's say, you know, in this example, if I were to short AMC at 40, um, expecting it could come down to, let's say, you know, 12 or 10, and it goes up to 70 uh, or even 80 if I allow for it because I'm targeting down here, then guess what? I was early. I went underwater, but then my trade planned out. However, if I shorted at 40 with a stop at 70 and it hit that stop, whether it ended up panning out or not, I was wrong. That's the difference of being early and wrong. Uh, being wrong means you're stopped out on a trade for a loss. There's no way to spin it. You're wrong. Uh, being early means your trade went underwater or maybe didn't go underwater, but just took longer to pan out than you thought. Now, where I'm going with this is you know, if I was a hedge fund uh, or even an individual can do this, you know, short it at 40 uh, back when it was, you know, back there uh, and buy a way out of the money call option because uh, the calls, again, I did, all other things being equal. I don't know what they were priced at at the time. I know volatility is high and expectations and the risk in the stocks. So you're probably paying a much fatter premium than normal. But usually on a $40 stock that's never even seen 70 uh, or at least not in years, uh, the 70 calls at that time would have been dirt cheap. So you can buy a call uh, on as many shares as you have. You know, you buy a thousand call options or uh, uh, whatever, whatever the number is to protect the number of shares that you have. And then that limits because if the stock crosses above there and starts going up, well, at that point, uh, every, every uh, dollar uptick in the uh, per share price you know, it's translating to profits on your calls, which are, you know, negating any losses on the shorts. Again, if you're using an equal uh, amount, you know, buying enough uh, call options to uh, cover your shares. Now, so all I'm trying to say here is because I've read about this is that the, uh, you know, the hedge funds are this time around are not covering their sitting tight. And again, it's that whole fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me thing. So I think they've now seen it is possible that these individual, you know, Robin Hood traders buying one, two, five, ten, hundred 10, 100 shares, whatever it is, 1,000 at a time uh, in large numbers can and have, you know, successfully been a able to engineer a, a, a short squeeze. And so for that alone, um, being that, you know, the hedgies are typically the smartest money on the street, 
I don't think it's going to happen again. But anything's possible, so you guys do what you want. I'll just give you the levels you watch, trade it as you want, and uh, that's where we're at. You know, one thing you can't argue is the momentum has certainly stalled out. It was heading, it was going parabolic, and for the last now week, it's been moving sideways, still below the high from uh, last Wednesday, Wednesday the uh, second. Okay, we'll pick up the pace. We've got a few more, and we'll wrap it up. Peloton, PTON, um, most recently highlighted again as another objective short entry on the bounce up to this gap resistance zone right here. Stalled, and we're back to it. So once again, offering an objective short entry right here at the bottom of that gap resistance zone with a stop somewhat above the top of the zone right there um, for a swing down to the next target at 72. Um, this one, you know, bigger picture is we had an uptrend right there, uptrend one, secondary uptrend line two, put in a divergent high right up right here. This marked a divergent high, negative divergence on the daily time frame, overbought. And since then, uh, we went on to break the uh, secondary trend line and we're in a downtrend. It's as simple as that. You can say what you want about Peloton if you're bullish or if you're bearish, like me, thinking it's going lower. One of us will be right, one of us will be wrong, but what you cannot argue is the fact that the stock is in a near-term downtrend uh, and will be unless it takes out this previous reaction high because a downtrend is simply a series of lower lows and lower highs. And so if we turn down here, where I suspect we will, head to that next target, you know, you could take a shot here, short it at, seven, uh, at, at the current price. It's at 110.57 right now. Uh, drop down to that next target would be about a 36% drop. Uh, so on that, 12% stop loss would be big, and that would only, that would still give you a nice 3 to 1 risk reward ratio, but I would keep it even tighter than 12%. I would probably keep it limited to a... Uh, about a well no I take that back because 12 is right about to that previous reaction high right there and um, so yeah you'd be looking at about a 12% stop loss for a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio shorting in here swinging it down to 72 uh, next up um, I mentioned Hertz HTZ GQ um, you know, company, bankrupt company, but uh, also, you know, another crowd favorite for the uh, Reddit group. And um, it's been stalling out. I mentioned it uh, short around that 640-ish level. It's resistance. And it's been trading there. It's not going down, but it's not going up either. So it's still still an objective short for a swing down to 350. Very aggressive, you know, when you're shorting this uh, this particular company right now. Keep that in mind. But uh, then again, I just want to share it as a trade idea. So if you did that, consider a stop above this recent high right here about uh, wherever that, uh, that previous reaction high from a couple weeks ago is. And that would be a minimum target down there, 350. Next target would be about 230 or so right there. Uh, TUP, this one's been a wash, rinse, repeat, kind of bounce trade. Play it in this uh, uh, trading range right here. Go long at the top, short at the bottom, long at the top, or short at the top, long at the bottom, reverse to a short at there, go long, cover your short, go long, long off the bottom, short off the top, and uh, that was the last objective short entry or time to unload a long taken at the bottom of the range, and we're still waiting for a tag of the uh, 23 level to either cover a short or nothing lasts forever. Uh, as far as trading ranges go, when you get down there, you could just lower your stop to protect profits and let it ride, hold out for a breakdown. If it breaks down, uh, remember the bigger picture is this one, like many stocks, peaked a while back, put in a divergent high on the daily time frame, and it's been moving lower. It's not, it's not certainly not a waterfall sell-off. Uh, we had two trading ranges and uh, traded in this one, same thing, up, down, up, down. When it broke it, boom, it started a new range. So maybe we're stair-stepping lower, next target 1960, and then 1354, big old gap right here, uh, and that's the top of that gap support. So that'd be a nice swing target if you're willing to give it some room uh, for a longer-term trade. Trend indicator is bearish as well, the PPO. Uh, you look at this uh, the signal line right here, the zero line on the PPO, and usually when the PPO uh, signal line, the white line, is below. You have a bearish trend like you did there. And when it's above, you have a bullish trend like you had here. And it's below now. So that supports the case for, you know, a primary uh, bearish trend in the stock. And 
and WGO have been highlighting this one for the past couple weeks here, maybe a couple months even. Potential uh, complex head and shoulders pattern with two right shoulders, neckline there, recent breakdown back test, and uh, the next sell signal to come on a break is 66.58, and there's my minimum target zone right there, 58.72 to about 61, we'll call it. Uh, still think it's going to head there. Tesla. I've uh, been bearish on this one for a long time. So sell signal back here on the break and back test of this or break of this trend line here and the divergent high and it's been stair stepping lower but a very slow grind. I still uh, think this one's going lower. Next target's 4, 464. I have it at 464, 66. You can call that 465. And next up, Mara, uh, Marathon Digital Holdings. This is a Bitcoin proxy, so to be be bullish on Bitcoin is to be bullish on Mara, but uh, both uh, became bearish on back here. Mara put in this big divergent high right there. That is a massive uh, divergent high. And so far, well, we've fallen and hit uh, that 2437 target from there. That drop was about, well, to the low point below there was almost a 70% drop so far, and I'm still calling it down to uh, at least this uptrend line in that 16, 15-ish level. Uh, so there's more meat on the bone there. Recently rejected off the downtrend line right here that I highlighted in the last update. And uh, that gives us another at least 26% downside, if I'm correct, to that 16, 15 target. And uh, quite likely, before all said and done, let's just say my preferred target right now is this uptrend line. And that's about, four, depending if and when we hit it, about 41, 45% more downside there. Uh, and that would jive with more downside in Bitcoin, of course. SIG Signet Jewelers, kind of a slow roll. I highlighted this one back here, divergent high and a minor trend line break and back test. And then we broke the primary trend line back test at nothing impulsive yet. Uh, I think at this point we're going to need to take out, when I zoom in nice and tight, to get this the party started on this one to the downside, take out about 56, I think will do the trick and take us down uh, to any or all of these potential targets. I'll have to, sh let's, let me get rid of these lines. These are old levels here. In fact, I'm going to move that up. Um, I'm going to move that to right there. All right, here's your max swing target, 32. Why 32? Well, you have a reaction high back here, a major reaction high from early 2020. Big reaction high right there. And um, looking at the volume price histogram, you might not be able to make that out in this video. It's uh, the colors are turned down. Yeah, that's a pretty aggressive target, but I think a nice long-term target, especially because that would chop it in, almost in half from here because we're about 60 right now. Um, and again, there's some stops along the way. You can see those levels if you want to you know, actively trade it or take profits early. Uh, BC Brunswick, Brunswick Corp. Uh, break of the trend line there. There was a breakdown. We hit the first target now. Um, we're trading right at it. That's 94.53 was where the actual support level is. We hit it uh, yesterday and again today. So there's a couple opportunities you had to take uh, profits on on that one. But I still expect a break of that level, and that'll be your next sell signal. Pretty much a solid close below there. Take us down to that target zone there. About Call it about 70 to 74 or so. And that'd be a pretty good drop if that comes. And, you know, I think it will, or I wouldn't be highlighting the trade idea. Uh, a couple more, and then we're going to wrap up. Ally, I'm starting to see, I get a sell signal on a fifth third today. Um, uh, uh, we, um what do you call it, a price alert, uh, broke support. And so I've been highlighting a lot of the financials and particularly the regional banks. I think they're going to be the first to go and then the big banks will follow. Here's Ally. Uh, that one was shared as a trade idea. It's been the list and we're uh, poised right now. We're not far below it. It's not an impulsive breakdown, but the redder the better. So watch this. If we get a solid close today, especially below today's low of uh, 54.29. That would give you a sell signal on Ally, and I don't, I don't have the first target until about 42.68. Uh, so that's a lot of meat on that bone. Uh, if that one pans out, that'd be about a 22% drop. And then here's a uh, fifth third FITB. Um, well, so far, look, I had a price alert earlier, and since I started the video, it snapped back. You can see on the one-minute chart. Psh, little snapback. However, 
watch it. Uh, the day is not uh, over yet. A solid close below the trend line. Here's the trend line I'm talking about. Comes off the September lows and fifth third. And uh, just a lot of regional banks are setting up nice. Some have already broken down. Uh, I covered this in a whole uh, separate video. KRE is the regional banking ETF. So there's your one size fits all. If you like the diversity and relative safety of shorting an ETF over individual stocks get more meat on the bone but picking the most bearish stocks and shorting those but it does take a little more to monitor a portfolio of say a half dozen or more individual regional bank stocks versus uh doing the etf plus when you have the individual stocks you have to worry about earnings and news uh releases and things like that and those uh those moves are mitigated when you have an etf because you have a you know a couple do several dozen holdings uh kre needs to break that little trend line there and then minimum target again minimum 63.75 uh, so if we get that sell signal soon, that'd be a drop of about nine and a half, almost 10%. And then just running through here, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Some of these are still above trend. PNC, uh, some have broken trend. TFC, you can see broke down three days ago and still moving lower today. That's what you want to see. That's a sell signal. That opens the door to my 55, 24 target. Again, I've covered all of these uh, in a video in the last, uh, at least a few weeks ago. SIVB, walk in the line right there. Just needs one bad day, one solid break below that trend line and that opens the door for a drop down to 469. Uh, some pretty good moves I see priced into these stocks and I have a, a pretty high degree of confidence on these targets, especially this one. That's a beautiful target intersecting uptrend line, primary uptrend line support with nice price support. Uh, that would be a drop of about 22% if in one hit. Uh, there's fifth third I just covered, Key Bank, uh, Regents Financial coming up on the trend line, not there yet, uh, CFG, Citizens, so forth and so on. Some, as you can see, some of these below trend and others just right on trend. And the thing is, they're very beautiful patterns. I would put a you know, high degree of confidence that uh, those that haven't broken down yet will, like this one, again, just a beautiful rising wedge right on the line big divergences ready to pop and just you know some really nice I'm going to give you one additional target on this one then I'm going to wrap the video up because I've already covered these I can't go through them all I'd love to um, but I'll update I'll, I'll put another update out there soon on the regionals uh, but that would be your first target about 181 uh, and that would be a drop of from where we're at now about six percent and then my second and preferred current preferred swing target uh, about 15% uh, drop down to about 162.70 or so. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Long video, uh, not even all inclusive. I did cover a lot of the individual stocks I wanted to cover. I'll do the dollar, gold, and commodities in the next video. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.